Hey, welcome back everybody. Today is day two of factoring where a is greater than one. So let's dive into it. The process itself is the exact same. Today the only difference is we're going to be throwing negatives into the problem. So if you notice both of these have negatives buried into the equations. So we're just going to be trying to figure out, hey, how do we do it now that there's negatives? It's the exact same steps. It just might be a little bit trickier to try to figure out which numbers are the numbers that work. Okay, so today's more of just a review. It's not necessarily anything new. It's just gonna be stretching your brain a little bit more. So without further ado, let's get started. We're gonna start off with the exact same steps as last time. Remember first, you multiply A and C. This is often referred to as A, uh, sorry, C. A, B, C. Five times seven is 35. What two numbers multiply to be 35, but add up to negative 12? That's a horrible 12. That's even worse, but whatever. Well, let's think of the numbers that multiply to be 35. We know that there's going to be a negative in there somewhere. So what two numbers multiply to be positive 35 that have a negative? Well, if there's going to be a negative, that means that both the numbers need to be negative. Figure if they multiply to be a positive, this is going to be a positive number. The two numbers multiplying either both need to be positive or both need to be negative. Well, since at least one of them needs to be negative, at least one's negative, it's either none or all, it means that both need to be negative. So numbers that multiply to be 35, let's go. We've got negative one, negative 35, we've got negative five, negative seven, um, I can't think of any others. Of those, which ones multiply, sorry, add to be negative 12? Negative five and negative seven. So remember, the first step is we're just kind of splitting this up. Five X squared plus negative five x minus 7x plus 7. Technically that can just be a minus 5x. It doesn't have to be plus negative. There you go. So we're going to sort this out a little bit. What can I factor out here? Well, I can factor out a 5 and an x. So 5x, that's going to leave me with x squared minus 1. Over here, what can I factor out? Now remember, it needs to be, sorry, not x squared just x minus one. And remember, they need to be the same. So we gotta think here, how can I make this become an x minus one? Really, a seven is the only thing that's the same between the two of them. But if I just factor out a seven, it's gonna leave you with negative x plus seven. They're not the same. So it can be a little bit tricky here, but what if we also took out a negative? Well, Harper Smith, this one doesn't have a negative. Well, what if I change it up a little bit? What if I change that positive to be two negatives? Don't two negatives make a positive? Well, now I could take a negative seven out of both. That leaves me with x minus, what would be left here? One. Hey, now we've got x minus one for both of them. So we factored correctly. Now I just need to factor out the x minus one. So if I factor out the x minus one from both sides, that'd leave me with 5x minus 7. If I multiply these two binomials together, I would get that answer. Let's try the other one. 4 times negative 7 is negative 28. What two numbers, when you multiply them together, you get negative 28, but add them together, you get 27. Well, let's make a little list of numbers that multiply to be negative 28. At least one of them does need to be negative. Um, we've got negative 1 and 28, negative 28 and 1, we've got negative 2 and 14, negative 14 and 2, negative 4 and 7, negative 7 and 4, and I believe that's about it. Which of those add to be 27? The first one that we picked. Negative 1 plus 28 is positive 27. So that's going to give me 4x squared plus negative 1x plus, um, let's see, 28x minus 7. Okay, you don't technically put the parentheses on yet. So if you look, negative 1x plus 28x, they are 27. So it's still the same equation. We just split it up a little bit. If I want to factor something out of this piece, it looks like I can factor out an x. So that'd give me x. 4x minus 1 plus, what can I factor out of here? Looks like I can factor a 7. 
will give me seven. Now the moment of truth, we need to make sure that's the same. Four X minus one, so if I factor out the seven, 28 divided by seven is four. Seven divided by seven is one. Are they the same? They are the same, so we factored correctly. Cool. Now, I just need to um, factor out the four X minus one on both of those. Four X minus one. X and seven. Let's try another problem. There you go, we've got 5x squared minus 42x plus 49. Write that on your paper, please. And we have 3x squared minus 4x minus 7. <clears throat> Let's try these two. All right, so step one, I'm going to multiply 5 and 49. That's going to give me 245. So I'm going to figure out what two numbers multiply 245, but add to be negative 42. Well, numbers that multiply to be a positive, let's try negative 1 and negative 245. And what's another couple that could work? Well, we know negative, the 5 and 49 work, 5 and 49, but those wouldn't add to be a negative number. It's so maybe negative 5 and negative 49. Maybe, let's see, not 49, that's divisible by 7. So what about negative 7 and negative 35? Ooh, 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 ooh. What do those add up to? <coughs> negative 42. I think we found our two magic numbers. So let's do 5x minus 7x. So 5x five, five squared minus 7x minus 35x plus 49. Well, can I factor anything here? Yeah, I can factor out the x. Sorry, no squares. Then here, what can I factor out? Mm, looks like I can factor out a seven. But watch this, if I just factor out a seven, I'm gonna be left with negative five x plus seven. Uh, remember, they've gotta be the same. They're not the same, so we did something wrong. Or, maybe not that it was wrong, but there was an extra step we should have done. Well, if we need to make this become a negative seven, that means this number needed to be a negative. So I'm gonna do instead is instead of that, instead of it being a positive, I'm just gonna change it to two negatives because don't two negatives make a positive? So it's still the same problem, it's still the same signal. Now what I can do is instead of just taking out a seven, I can also take a negative out of each one, okay? That would leave me with five X, minus seven. This one's a little tricky, I know. So we've got the same binomial here, that means that we did it correctly, so my answer is going to be five x minus seven, then what's left over, x minus seven. Ta-da! All right, three x squared minus four x minus seven, here we go. Three times negative seven is negative 21. What two numbers Add to be negative 4, but multiply to be negative 21. Well, let's make a little chart of numbers that add to be negative 21. Sorry, multiply to be negative 21. We've got, well, you know, at least one of them needs to be negative. So negative 1 and negative 21. We've got negative 3 and 7. We've got negative 21 and 1. We've got negative 7 and 3. Uh, I think that's about it. Those are all the numbers I can think of. Which of those add to be negative 4? Not that one. Ooh, that's positive 4. That's close. So this one adds to be negative 4. So that gives me 3x squared minus 7x plus 3x minus 7. Okay? You could have done those backwards. doesn't matter. So as we come down here, 
Can I factor anything? Yeah, I can factor out an x. That gives me x. Uh, that leaves me a 3x minus 7 plus, I can't factor anything there, so 3x minus 7. Ooh, they're the same. All right. But if I didn't technically factor anything out, what number still exists here? A 1. Okay. At this point, there always has to be a number there, even if it is 1. Let's factor out the 3x minus 7 and x plus 1. Ta da! Okay, I'm going to erase my work. I want you to try these next two problems I'm going to put up on the board. All right, so we've got. 2x squared minus 5x minus 3. I'm going to give it a try. The other one I'm going to write over here while you get started. Over here we have 5x squared minus 3x minus 8. Okay, pause the video. Try the problem. All right, you should have paused the video. You should have your answer by now. Let's do this. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. I want to figure out which number is multiplied to be negative 6, but add to be negative 5. Remember the little x game thing that we did? We're thinking, what two numbers multiply to be negative 6, but add to be negative 5? If you guessed negative 6 and positive 1, you are correct. Okay? Um, negative 6 plus 1. Negative 5. Negative 6 times 1, negative 6. We multiply, add. So here we go. When we do this, we've got 2x squared minus 6x plus 1x minus 3. Those are still negative 5x. We now go through. Um, can I factor anything out here? Ooh, it looks like I could factor out a 2 and an x. So that gives me 2x on the outside and x minus 3 on the inside. Over here I've got 1x and minus 3. Is there anything that's the same there? No? Okay. So I'm just going to do plus 1, x minus 3. Are they the same? Yes. That's always a good sign. It means that we are so far doing everything correctly. So that's going to leave me with um, x minus 3 and 2x plus 1. You got that one right, give yourself a pat on the back. Let's try this one. 5 times negative 8 is negative 40. If you haven't done this one yet, pause it. Okay. Um, we want to know what two numbers multiply to be negative 40, but add to be negative 3. Um, on this one, you might want to write out numbers. I think I've got them. Yeah, okay. So you could do what, negative 1 and 40, because they do need to multiply to be negative, negative 40 and 1. You could try uh, 2 and 20, um, but remember, we want it to be negative 3. So what about negative 8 and 5? Do they multiply to be negative 40? They do. What do they add up to be? Negative 3. There's our two numbers. So we got 5x squared minus 8x plus 5x minus 8. Could have done those backwards. In fact, if I would have done them backwards, the 5s would have lined up, the 8s would have lined up. Might have worked out a little bit nicer. I don't know. <coughs> Let's figure out, though. So here's the only thing I can um, factor out would be the x. That's with 5x minus 8. Over here, the only thing I can factor out is a 1. They're both a 1, so there's really nothing I can factor out x minus 8. Ooh, they are the same. So are we good so far? We are good so far. Woo -woo. Okay. So I bring, I factor out the 5x minus 8. And I'm left with x plus 1. Cool. I hope that this was helpful for you. If it was not, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, if you need a couple more example problems, let your math teacher know. I'm sure that they'll be happy to give you a couple more examples. Um, Make sure that you've taken notes. If you've not taken notes on this, go back and take some notes so that way you're a little bit more comfortable with what's happening.
Anyway, thank you for coming today. Harper Smith, signing off for now.